what's going on welcome back welcome back if you didn't see the last part you're probably wondering what this is about but you should probably go check out the last part part one we're looking over my friend matthew's cube otherwise known as elk tears on the stream and in twitch chat uh he's a great guy good friend of mine and he he sent over his vintage cube for me in the first part we looked at all the white and blue cards and i gave my opinions on those today we're looking at the black and the red cards so black here we go i'm also have i have my cube up over here as well just to uh do a little comparison i have putrid imp in my cube i think putrid imp is still fine i think so it's a great discard outlet i don't think it's great on its own it's just a stupid creature <laughs> like it's really not great but it fuels the the discard deck it fuels the reanimate deck right it gives you a way to discard and i think that's pretty necessary i mean it's the same reason i have like three looters instead of two i have jace rona and suspicious stowaway um brain maggot dark confidant i do not have brain maggot i still have him as Miric fiend so does he and he has kite sail freebooter this is a lot of this one effect brain maggot kite sail and mesmeric fiend that's a lot of redundancy i feel like it's that's weird to have so much redundancy because you can just have different cards in those slots and you can have a lot more versatility and a lot more um variety in your cube um i don't have pack rat anymore i did take out pack rat because i felt like the play pattern for this card was also not fun um it prevents you from doing things. So you sit there, you play a pack run on two. Are you going to play any of your other spells that you've drafted in the vintage cube? No, probably not. You're going to make another pack rat. And then on turn five, on turn four, what are you going to do? Are you going to play any spells you drafted in the vintage cube? Probably not. You're going to make a pack rat. I don't like the play pattern pack rat produces. <laughs> it makes it so your deck is full of pack rats. And that's just not fun. Like you're playing the vintage cube to play all these cool cards from magic's history. And I just don't think that's a great way to do it. Um, I have Null Priest of Oblivion. And the reason is twofold. One, it's a 2-1 uh, with Menace. And I like creatures with evasion, even if it's like pseudo-evasion like Menace. Because they fuel Fallen Shinobi, which is one of my favorite cards. And I think everyone loves a Fallen Shinobi. Um... So this is a cool way to do that while also supporting the reanimate archetype. So this is a card that's good on two, it's good on three, and it's good on six, right? So you're going to play this on turn six and get back like a Grave Titan or something that you've you've put in the graveyard. So it just has a lot of versatility and the lifelink is not nothing. So I think Null Priest of Oblivion is a pretty sweet addition and I haven't seen many people talk about it. Six mana is a lot for a reanimate spell, but you're also getting the versatility of having a two drop with lifelink and menace and also a, the two one body you get as well when you play it as a six drop. So you're basically playing a two one for two and a four mana reanimate spell. I have Emperor Hex Mage. I have Torok. I have Bowmaster, Unus Prowler. Uh, I have Blade of the Oni as well, which I think was just kind of like the, the normal, the, it's just like your, your 3 one two mana black beater card. Uh, it's a 3-1 with Menace again. So again, it's kind of evasive. But if you if you equip it to something, that thing becomes a 5-5 five, five demon with Menace. So it just makes all your creatures in the late game bigger. You draw Putrid Imp in the late game with a Blade of the Oni out, and it's a 5-5 five, five with Menace. Um, so, you know. It also doesn't lose its abilities. So you could Putrid Imp and then discard a card to give a flying so i mean like there's it, it it feels like a versatile card again that's good on turn two or it's good on turn you know six so and it has menace so um other than that i also added gix i thought gix was going to be bad and then i played it and i was like this guy's really good uh i have murderous rider i have ophiomancer I took out Opposition Agent, and the reason was the same as uh, Subtlety, as I mentioned last time. It's a card that you just keep in your hand because you really want to get them. You want to get your opponent. Um, if you play this and they haven't cracked their fetch land, they're going to crack it in response. And if you wait for them to crack it, you're just going to hold this card and not play other things. I don't. I'm not in love with cards that prevent you from playing your cards 
Um, and I, I think I've tried to remove those slowly from my cube. This is different because again, it's a commander card, just like Hull Breacher, where if you have three other opponents, your opportunity to play this triples. You have a lot more opportunities to play this. And if you pass your turn three with three, with three different, uh, like with this in your hand and three different opponents, the odds of you being able to play it on turn three are very high. The odds of you playing this on turn three in a cube are very low. I had this in my cube for a while and I just took it out. It, it, I realized that like there were so many times where I had it and I was just holding it and I'm like, cool. I could have played like Frexian arena. I could have played Gix. I could have played Ophiomancer, but I didn't because I wanted to get them. So I held this card in my hand. And then if you play it at the end of their turn on turn three, without getting them, you're never going to get them after that. Like it's just never going to happen. They're just not going to cast that spell. They're going to kill this guy and then they're going to cast it. I also have Sedgemore Witch for the same reason of the menace. It makes guys, it has a great ward. It's just a solid body. Um, one thing I do have instead of Opposition Agent is Graveyard Trespasser. I think that card is great. Blade of the Graveyard. That should be a card. Wow, are there really only... There's only six cards that have the word Graveyard in their title. That's fascinating. Yeah, so Ward is discard a card. He's a 3-3 three, three for, for three. Um, and then you get to exile a card from their Graveyard. And then he's a 4-4 four, four for for three and they still discard a card and you exile two cards and you gain a life and they lose a life. And it's just, it has a lot going on. It's just a really versatile, really strong card. Um, that's the, that does the thing you want it to do. It exiles cards from a graveyard. It's nice as a sideboard card, but you're probably just going to play it in the main deck. It's a main deck card with a sideboard feel. I added disciple of bolus to my cube. If you were, if you watched the last, the last one of these, I talked about how I had a lot of the neon dynasty dragons, the four, five and six mana creatures that like when you sacrifice them, you can choose one of two effects. And I liked, I want to try disciple of bolus because like, even if you have disciple of bolus and you sacrifice a torrential gear Hulk, all of a sudden you're drawing five cards and gaining six life. Like that's a cool effect. Even if you do this on like a two, three, you're still drawing two and gaining three. Like, I, I like Disciple. I've always liked Disciple of Bolus. Disciple of Bolus with Thrag Tusk was amazing because you would sacrifice the Thrag Tusk, draw five, gain three, and make a three three. Um, so I kind of like being able to include that in here. I know that's kind of a niche card and it's probably not gonna be for everyone, but I liked it. I have Gonti, Grief, and Ravenous Chupacabra. I have Shouldered and Yogmoth. I think I don't have Rankle. I never liked Rankle. I think it's really hard to get his symmetrical ability to be worthwhile. And I don't think it's really worth it. Um, it could be fine. I just don't, I personally don't think the card is great. I don't really like symmetrical abilities like this, where you have to really engineer a situation where it benefits you. Like each player loses life and draws a card. I don't want to give them a card. So I'm probably not going to use that. Each player sacrifices a creature. If you're playing Rankle, it's very likely you have more creatures, but I guess that's good. I don't know. It just doesn't really... It's fine. It's not a card I, I mind. It's just a card I personally don't like. So not only has, only has Custody Lich for a 5-drop, I also have Custody Lich as a 5-drop, but I also have the 5-mana Shieldred. I still have Shriek Maw because I think as a 2-mana removal spell, it's fine. And then as a 5-mana evasive creature, it's it's good. And I have Junji. Let's look up some of these because some of them are obscure. Wow, she, there's more cards with the, with the word Shieldred in their name than there are cards with Graveyard in the name. That's interesting. So this is the Shieldred I have. 4-5 with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. And then you can flip her for 5 uh, for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker they control. So you get rid of two creatures that way. Each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards. Put all creature cards from all graveyards on the battlefield under your control. Exile this, and then return to the battlefield. So then you get it. Uh, you get shoulder back. I find that all of these have really cool abilities, but they're not cheap or easy. Right? Like if you pay five to exile this, they can kill it in response. You activate it only as a sorcery. And if they have eight or more cards in their graveyard. So it's not easy, but it's a cool effect. And the card on the front side is still good. 
So I like this shouldered. I also have, a, nope, uh, nope, Junji. Nope, that's not it either. We're doing well. Junji, there we go. Oh my God, is it, what is, is it not? Is it not J-U-N-J-I? Also, the mic is in front of my keyboard, so I'm just kind of winging it. So 5-5 five, five Flying Menace, literally every black creature has menace now. <laughs> so many creatures I've gone over have menace. Blade of the Oni, uh, Null Priest of Oblivion. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Sedgemore Witch. Shieldred. Uh, Junji. So 5-5 five, five for 5 with Flying Menace. Uh, when it dies, each opponent discards 2 and loses 2 life. Or put a non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose two life. And I like this because one of the best parts about reanimate cards is when they can choose from either graveyard. So this is basically a five mana reanimate spell that is first a flying menace dragon. So it's kind of frustrating to get rid of. Um, and again, I added greater good to my own cube. So I can sack this, draw five cards, discard three and then reanimate something or make them discard two and lose two. So a lot of versatility. And I just like having cool interactions like that for people to find. Like, I think the more cool interactions like that, the more, the more variety and versatile these cards are. Um, I think the better play experience. So for Grave Titan, he has Grave Titan and Troll of Kaza Doom. I just, I, again, like this guy's fine. But I can't cut Massacre Room. I still have Massacre Room in my cube. <clears throat> Archon. Oh, interesting. He has no seven drops. He just goes straight to eight. I have Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for the same reason I have Steel Seraph. I think it's great at three. I also think it's great at seven. And both Steel Seraph and Flesh Gorger are great with Ephemerate, which is in his cube. Um, you could also use Touch of Touch the Spirit. Touch of Touch of the what's it called? Touch of the Spirit Realm. Touch the Spirit Realm, yeah. So, I mean, that's just a great way to blink these guys. You can play them as three threes for three mana and then blink them into their bigger five four slash seven five forms, which is super cool. Um, also, Phy Phyrexian Flesh Gorger's ward being pay life equal to its power, so you pay seven life in order to kill it. And it has m Menace and Lifelink. And again, it's, it's a Menace creature, right? So you play it on three and you're perfectly set up to menace it with Fallen Shinobi or to ninjutsu it with Fallen Shinobi. And then you can replay it at seven when you get to seven. Like it's just interactions like that are kind of things I look for. Like what car, what decks and cards um, does this go good with? Like Fallen Shinobi is kind of a role player. It's a super strong card in the cube that you really want to build around and make sure you have cards on one, two, and three that can help you enable the ninjutsu for this. Because getting two of your opponent's cards for free is usually backbreaking. So yeah, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, it's versatile as well. You get it on three, you get it on seven, you can blink it, you can reanimate it, you can use it for getting through with Fallen Shinobi. Like, it has a lot of versatility. And I also have Shouldered Whispering one still, the classic seven mana Shouldered. I still think it's a good reanimate target. With Archon of Cruelty, I might take it out. It might not make the cut anymore. I'm not sure. But I'm definitely not super off shoulder. I think it's still fine. Like going to their turn, making them sack a guy, going to your turn, getting a guy back is just really sweet. And shoulder puts it into play. It's a lot of stuff. So for planeswalkers, I just have Liliana of the Veil. Matthew also has Liliana of the Last Hope. Um, Liliana of the Last Hope is in my maybe board and definitely a consideration. I just haven't added it yet. So for instance, we have Dark Ritual, Entomb, Fatal Push, and Vampiric Tutor. Those are the exact same instance I have. I do not have Cabal Ritual because I, th I think it's poop. I think it's a card that you only play in Storm and no other deck takes this card. There's cards like this that are just kind of like, they're, they're slotted for the exact like most unfun deck in cube, right? Like this card, no one takes Cabal Ritual. No one takes Desperate Ritual. No one takes Pyretic Ritual. No one takes... It's, it's very rare someone is taking Manamorphose outside of Storm. There's so many cards that only go into Storm. And the one thing I try to do with my cube is make sure a lot of the cards have various roles, various decks they can go in, various uses, as I just mentioned. 
So I don't have Cabal Ritual. I do have, I don't have Go for the Throat. I have Infernal Grasp. I have Shallow Grave and I have Shield Red's Edict. Um, I also have Dismember. I don't have Corpse Dance. I think Corpse Dance is just kind of a worse Shallow Grave. Um, like no one's ever buying it back. It's very, very rare that you're buying it back. And if you're not buying it back, you're just, you're just paying five. You're just paying three mana for, for shallow grave. You know, it's, it's basically the same card. Um, I do not have pile on. I have baleful mastery instead. I was going to have pile on at first, but I thought the odds of convoking it were just not super high. Also, Baleful Mastery says Exile. Pylon says Destroy, which makes a difference. Additionally, uh, Baleful Mastery, you can you can play for two mana. If you're in a pinch and you only have two mana up and you need to kill a creature, you're going to want to have Baleful Mastery and not Pylon. So despite the fact that it lets your opponent draw a card, I think the versatility of being able to play Baleful Mastery always, anytime you want, for two or for four, is very good. Um, snuff out is, is, is good. I can probably include it. I just haven't. Eh, it's fine. I do have bone shards. I think bone shards was a great, great addition. Um, letting you discard a card to kill a creature or a planeswalker is really strong, especially when you want a discard outlet. I have duress. I do not have inquisition. I just think it's not very strong. I don't think it's needed. Um, again, it comes down to redundancy. You have duress, you have him to Torok, you have thought sees mind twist like it, this is just the worst of those four and i just don't think it's necessary i have mind twist reanimate and thought sees i have collective i don't actually i think i do have damn i do have damn um i just have it in the i have it in the is it or the the orzov category and the reason is because this can be an exclusively a white card. You can just play it as a Wrath of God, or it can be exclusively a black card. You can play it as just a two mana removal spell. Um, so it's not just a black card. I do have Demonic Tutor. I have Exhum, him, and I and Knight's Whisper. I guess I do have Knight's Whisper. I didn't actually think I did. That's fascinating. Uh, I have Toxic Deluge. I do not have Yawgmoth's Will. Again, it just goes in Storm. No one's really playing Yawgmoth's Will if they're not storming. I have Damnation, don't have Tendrils, and I have been considering from the Catacombs. One thing, oh, I, I forgot to say, uh, two other cards I do have. I do have Makeshift Mannequin, which I think might come out. I think I might replace that with from the Catacombs. The reason being, it's kind of clunky, and like a lot of times you want to be able to discard an Emrakul and then Makeshift Mannequin it back because it's an instant, but that's just way more expensive than like Shallow Grave, which is what you kind of want to do. And I mean, the creature just becomes really fragile afterwards. But again, like if you're doing it with like Inkwell Leviathan, it's probably fine. It has shroud. Like there's a lot of creatures that don't care about that. Um, which is why I kept it in because I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. And it's one of the few targeted instant speed reanimate cards, which I think is worth something, but I do have wretched confluence as well. Uh, choose three. So for five, it's an instant target player draws and loses a life. So very similar to Mystic Confluence where you draw a card. Gets negative two, negative two until end of turn. So you can do that to three different creatures. You can do it to one, four, four and draw a card or return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. So again, it's a very versatile card like Mystic Confluence. And I think for five mana, it does a lot. So I do have that guy in there. Uh, thinking of adding from the catacombs, I do have bullets of Citadel because you can tinker into it and whether like, it's another, it's another card that fulfills a kind of storm feeling where you tinker into this and then you get to do a bunch of cool stuff, but your opponent's not sitting there waiting for 20 minutes while you do it. And you don't have to take a bunch of dirtily cards like cabal ritual that are just, they're not fun cards. <laughs> like it doesn't do anything cool. Um, and it's the same reason I wish claw talisman as well. Like, we already have Demonic Tutor and Vampiric Tutor. Like, I don't think you need a third tutor that's kind of just like, again, just there for Storm usually. I have Animate Dead and Bitter Blossom. I also have Call of the Ring because I think it's very, very good. Um, every time I had Call of the Ring, it was insane. It's always, like, as soon as you get any creature out, Call of the Ring just becomes like a Phyrexian Arena. But it also lets you loot every turn. It lets your creature uh, become unblockable. It, it lets your creature deal an extra three damage. 
all of the modes are very strong. And if you play it on turn two, it's so quick to get there. Uh, and it just keeps, it's like an equipment that keeps equipping itself to any future creature you get and also lets you draw cards. So yeah, I, I wasn't sure I'd feel like call of the ring, but then every time I played it, I was like, this is very impressive. I have necromancy and recurring nightmare. I have virtue of persistence. And again, no bargain because storm. So yeah, very similar. Um, I took out some of the, I feel like some of the, the, the cards that are kind of like have like outlived their, their usefulness, like pack rat. And then I also don't have a lot of the same redundancy, like brain maggot, kite sail, mesmeric feet. Like, like you don't need, I don't think you need brain maggot, mesmeric fiend, kite sail, freebooter, duress, thought seize, inquisition, him to Torok. Like that's just so much discard. Like, I feel like you're diluting the amount of things that your black decks can do by including so much redundancy like that. But yeah, we both have Dragon's Ridge Channeler and Goblin Guide and Goblin Welder, Lava Mancer, Swift Spear. I did not add Orcish Lumberjack. This is a card that was added to the Magic Online Vintage Cube. I just was not impressed with it. There was never a time where I wanted this. And I wonder if this is because the Vintage Cube added. I, I do wonder if Matt's making a lot of changes based on what the Vintage Cube is doing. Because, like, as a as a person who plays a lot of Magic Online Vintage Cube with these cards, I'm just like, there's no deck where I'm like, Orcish Lumberjack. I need, I'm going to have a red source on turn one, and then I'm going to have a forest, and I'm going to sacrifice. Like, it's just kind of hard to, like, get going. And, like, green is already doing this without having to sacrifice forests or play red cards. So it's kind of just a weird... I have Ragavan, and I don't have Voldaren Epic here. One card I do have still is Stromkirk Noble. I don't know if this guy is just not good anymore. Can be blocked by humans. Uh, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So this might be on the chopping block, I'll be honest. I, I'm sure we can find a better 1-drop. I'm actually surprised I still have this in there. But... I'm sure we can find something better. I don't know if it's Voldaire and Epic here. We'll see. We'll look into it. So, Bloodthirsty Adversary and Dire Fleet I have. Kenra I have. Embreath Shieldraker I do have. He doesn't have Eidolon of the Great Revel anymore, which is interesting. I still do. I also wonder if Eidolon's time is up. It's something I've considered recently because it's, a, it's kind of really obnoxious to play against. But... The problem with that is it's one of the best things red has going for it, right? Like that sort of obnoxiousness to play against is what red has. So it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it goes. Uh, I have Goblin Crater Maker in mind because I think he's a very, very versatile creature that kills any... <laughs> any colorless card yeah so it, it and it doesn't just kill artifacts it destroys colorless non-land permanents so you can kill ugin you can kill karn you can kill uh mere battle sphere you can kill talismans like as far as two-man artifact removal goes i think this guy is better than a lot of it and you can also just sacr you can sacrifice it to deal two damage to something so i mean it just does a lot plus it's a creature it can attack um, he has Magda. I haven't included Magda in mine yet. I think Robber of the Rich is also just not very good. Um, I know they added it to the Vintage Cube, but like, if you play this card, it's just not very impressive. If Defending Player has more cards in hand than you do. I mean, so there's just so many stipulations. Like, like it's during any turn you attack with a rogue, you can cast that card. So like if you draw a three drop, if you, if you attack with robber, the rich turn comes into play and hit a three drop from them, then you go to their turn and they kill your robber. Like you just get nothing out of it. I don't know. I have magmatic channeler in the deck because I think it goes better with a lot of the strategies and it's also a looter. So discard a card, excel the top two cards, of your library, then choose one of them. You can play that card. So you can hit lands. So you can play lands off the top of your library. So it basically draws you two by discarding a card. Um, and then as long as there are four more instants and sorceries, which is super easy to do in the Vintage Cube, gets plus three, plus one. It's a four, four. Yeah, I don't know. Magmatic Challenger seems cool. Uh, it's kind of versatile. We both have Runaway Steamkin. 
Uh, I don't have Kerry Zev because I'm also just not impressed with Kerry Zev, I guess. Uh, she's fine. I just don't think, like, I'd rather have Crater Maker <laughs> than, like, a Kerry Zev. Um, Burgi, Bone Crusher, Ravel Master, Imperial Recruiter, Lelia, Rampaging Ferocidon, and Seasoned Pyromancer. We have all the same, except he has Reckless Stormseeker. Again, this is in the Magic Online Vintage Cube, and I just don't have this guy. It's fine. But, like, why doesn't it get... Like, this guy has a rocket on his back. Why isn't he flying, right? So it's just, like, it just attacks as a 3-3. Three, three. The turn it comes into play with haste. Which, I don't know. It gives other creatures haste too. I think it's good. Actually, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Avalanche Riders is just, it needs to be retired. Like, this card's not good. It's just, it's kind of poop. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Four mana for this, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Like, I think Stone Rain is almost better than this. Like, the 2-2 two -two is usually never relevant, and you're never going to pay the upkeep. Um, so, for my four drops, I have Atsushi the Blazing Sky which is the red dragon. So when it dies, exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards or you create three treasures. Again, he's a four, four, so he's fine with greater good. He's just a four, 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 four with flying and trample. So solid body just does, just does it does dragon stuff. Uh, I have caves of chaos adventure. I have flame tongue Kavu Cause I think, I still think flame tongue Kavu is great. Um, I don't have P and Karen LR cause I just, I'm not super, I'm never super impressed with P and Kieran LR. Like, I never want to play it. You, like, you always play it, and then, like, you want to be able to untap and sack the tokens to kill things, but then they always, it's just a 2-2, two -two, so they can kill it in response, or, like, before your next turn. Uh, I have Rampaging Raptor, because I think it's great. I have Torbrand, Thane of Redfell, which, like, adds two damage. Oh, what is this? Rankle and Torbrand. Um, it deals, if, if a red source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent opponent controls deals that much plus two. So like your lightning bolts deal five, burst lightning deals four, bone crusher giant attacks for six. So it also counts himself. So he's basically a four, 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 four. Um, and the other card I have is Urabrask this one so again four 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 with first strike whenever you cast an instant or sorcery it deals one damage to target opponent and you get to add a red mana um for one red you can exile them if you've cast three or more instant or sorcery spells this turn so again kinds of leans into a red instant sorcery instant sorcery deck uh the great work deals three damage to target opponent each creature they control so kind of a sweeper you make three treasures and then you may cast instants and sorceries from your graveyard. If a spell cast this way, it would be put into a graveyard exile instead. And then you get to flip him. So they keep coming back, which is super sweet. And I think being able to build towards these effects is really uh, rewarding and worthwhile. And they're all pretty decent. Um, but yeah, P and Karen Lar just feels like it's kind of outlived. It's, it's fun. <laughs> and Avalanche Riders is just actual poop. Like that card just no good. No, no bueno. Uh, Fury, Glorybringer, Goldspan, Kiki Jiki, and Zealous Conscripts I all have. Siege Gang Commander I have not had for quite a while. I just think, again, it's similar to P and Kieran LR. Um, like, if you cast a card like Zealous Conscripts or Goldspan or Glorybringer or Fury, like, those are all taking over the board those turns. And I think, like, Siege Gang, it just doesn't do that as much as you want it to. It's just making a bunch of 1-1s for 5 mana. And Fury is just, like... <laughs> kind of laughs at it you just go kill siege gang kill two one ones and then you have a three three double striker and they have one one so i mean like it's just i don't think the power level is there for siege gang commander anymore uh i have inferno titan i do not have oliphant and i have a tali as well and i think a tali is super cool uh you have chandra i do too i have duretti um i think duretti is falling out of favor a little bit but i still think the discard outlet's really good the return an artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield is really good. Like I think Duretti does a lot of cool things still. Uh, Cloth of the Hammer I have not had for a while. Um, I don't think the mono deck, mono red decks need this as a four drop. And I also don't think he's good in any other decks but the mono red decks. 
I have Jaya, Fiery Negotiator, because I think she's really good. And someone almost wrecked me with her in, in Pioneer. Actually, they did wreck me with her. They boarded into Jaya, and I got absolutely destroyed. So it's a four-minute Planeswalker. You plus one to make a 1-1 one, one with, with prowess. So basically a Monastery Mentor token. But it's red. Negative one, you exile the top two cards. Choose one and play it. And it says play, so it can be a land. Negative two, choose target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you attack this turn, it deals damage equal to the number of attacking creatures. So I'll choose your Goblin Rabble Master. I'll attack with two creatures. Deals him two, and he dies. Then if you get to negative eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a red instant or sorcery, copy it twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. Very cool card. Uh, also, no Chandra Hope's Beacon is wild to me. Chandra Hope's Beacon is actually busted. That card is fantastic. Um, the, the best part is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. So you play your six mana Planeswalker. You plus one, uh, you plus two to add two mana of any combination. So you're probably, you might not use this unless you want to be like removal spell, kill two things. Super good. Plus one, exile the top five cards of your library until the end of turn. You may cast an instant or sorcery from among them. That's really good. <laughs> I've actually never focused on this. I've mostly focused on like people just playing a card and doubling it like cruel ultimatum. <laughs> you know, it's very, very sweet, especially if you're playing like storm, right? Cause you can go Chandra into like mind's desire on the next turn or something. Um, I guess that doesn't work though, because it says it's not a may ability. Like whenever you cast an instant sorcery, you, you do have to copy it. So it does, it does copy the first thing. So it's likely that your first spell won't be Mind's Desire if you want to storm a little bit. But nevertheless, like it's just such a super cool card. It works with so many things. Like if you go Chandra plus two and then Time Walk, Chandra plus two Ancestral Recall, like it does a lot. It's a very strong Planeswalker and it's a very sweet addition to a Vintage Cube. Burst and Lightning. I do not have Unholy Heat. I don't think my cube or many vintage cubes are in a position to support delirium. So I feel like this is actually just kind of a worse burst lightning. And I'm not sure if it's worth the slot. I have a Braden incinerate. I don't have lightning strike or pyretic ritual. I had lightning strike for a while. And then I was just kind of like, eh, I just don't think it's necessary. Like I think the red decks are wanting to use more creatures than, than burn spells like this. I don't have Char, I do have Seething Song, and it's because I think Seething Song is great even outside of Storm decks. There are so many good red five drops, including Through the Breach. Um, I actually remember this one cube I was dra I drafted, and I went turn three Seething Song, Goblin Dark Dwellers, get back Seething Song, cast Seething Song, Through the Breach, and then I threw the Breach like some big idiot. And then I still had a four four on board, and it was very, very cool. I think Seething Song is, is a cool broken start enabler for the red decks. Uh, I also have Through the Breach, and I have Fire Blast. I mean, I can definitely see adding a card like Char and having just another red instant. I'm just not 100% sure it's needed. Uh, I don't have Bonfire, because I don't think there's a ton of great ways to set it up. Like, the reason I have a card um, like... Triumph of St. Catherine, the, the miracle card in white, is because it sets itself up. It puts itself in the top six cards, and then you get to play it that way. Uh, that doesn't work really for Bonfire. And, like, if it's in your opening hand, it's just not great. I don't know. It's kind of too... It doesn't blow me away, I think, is, is one of the biggest issues I have with Bonfire. I do have Chain Lightning... I don't have Faithless Looting because I think it's poop and no one really wants to ever play Faithless Looting. I don't think it's very fun. Like, it's just card disadvantage and, like, I don't know. There's a lot better effects like this that you can use. Uh, I don't have Firebolt, but it is on the short list of cards I might consider because I think, again, this is a card that's just probably better than Unholy Heat. Um, if you can trigger the Delirium, it's great. But I don't know. I guess it's probably, I mean, not only he's a great card, but the decks that are playing it and constructed just are able to do that. Like they build them in such a way. Jessica's will is kind of 
terrible. I don't love Jessica's Will. I think it's really bad. Um, and I think this is another card that was in the Vintage Cube for like a season, but then it was it's it's actually been removed. It's taken out this this most recent iteration, and I think it's because it's just not very good. Um, the first part relies on your opponent having a ton of cards in their hand, and the second part requires requires you to have a ton of mana and hit a bunch of low cost stuff. Because you can play them this turn. It doesn't say until the end of your next turn. Um, so I just think this card's really kind of narrow and weird. Uh, I do have Light of the Stage. I do have Will of Fortune. I do have Fiery Confluence. I did... I like Jockalops. I think it's super... I think it's a super interesting inclusion. I don't know what the goal is with Jockalops, though. Because it kills all the artifacts. So you get no artifact mana. And it kills all the lands. I can see having this in a Planeswalker deck... Because then your, your Planeswalkers just survive and you get to have a bunch of Planeswalkers. But otherwise, like, it just grinds. If you don't have that, it just grinds games to a halt. And you're just restarting the same way Upheaval restarts. But you don't lose your cards with Upheaval. And, and usually one person is ahead. So it's kind of like a red Upheaval. I don't know. It's an interesting inclusion for sure. But I'm not sure if it's needed with Upheaval. Yeah, I just worry about, like, if you don't have anything on board with this, like, the game just resets. And unlike Upheaval, like, with Upheaval, you're still getting... Your opponent Your opponent gets all his stuff, and presumably you have set up a turn for yourself. So then when it goes to their turn, they have, like, 12 cards, and they can easily sculpt their next five turns. Whereas Jockalops, you could both be like, I didn't draw any lands, go. Okay, go. Okay, go. And it's just not... It's not super fun. Um, I have Mizzix Mastery, which I added recently because I do think it's with the package, the Dream Halls package, and with cards like Sublime Epiphany or Mystic Confluence or like all these really big, expensive, flashy instants and sorceries. Like it's it's a kind of a cool card to add. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I stuck that in there because I think it's fun to try. You can also Magma Opus on turn two and then Mizzix Mastery it, um, which is a great way to do it because it costs four. So... I don't have Underworld Breach. I do have Bitter Reunion because I think it really supports the reanimate decks. And it's just a great draw to discard one card. Um, you, It's great for the reanimate decks. It's also fine for non-reanimate decks. Whereas Underworld Breach, just good for Storm. Uh, I have Fable of Mirror Breaker and Sulfuric Vortex. I also have Sneak and Splinter Twin. Those are, I think we're very similar except there's a lot of like storm cards that just aren't very good on their own. Like no one's going to, no one's going to really play this unless you're like really, really, really heavy storm. And even then, like, it's not really great in that deck. So it's like, I don't know. Um, kind of conflicted on cards like that. I also think there's a bunch of cards that, that should probably be updated. Like carry Zev, uh, avalanche riders, things like that. I don't think you need brain maggot, Kite Self Rebooter and Mesmeric Fiend. I think that's just so much redundancy. Like, I think you can diversify what Black's doing with like even like a Glint Sleeve Siphoner, which is which is just a fantastic two drop. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Matthew's black and red cards. Let me know what you guys think again. Would love to hear your thoughts. I have I'm having a blast going over these cards. This is super fun. I love talking about Vintage Cube, and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. But uh Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.